Now that we've covered some dry basics of the American legal system, we're going to dig into specific law enforcement practices and protections. In this part of the course, we're going to begin with conventional government procedures for getting at information. We're also going to work through the basic structure of the Fourth Amendment, which protects individual privacy. Then, we're going to turn to telephone snooping. Much of American surveillance law derives from the telephone and analogizes to the telephone, so it's critical to understand that area of law. There is one important caveat I want to share before turning to the material. The following parts deal with surveillance on United States soil. The rules are different for surveillance outside the United States, and we'll discuss that later in the context of foreign intelligence. This lecture starts us off with a simplified model for approaching surveillance procedures. I've borrowed this model from the computer security field, where it has been the standard explanatory tool for decades. While the model may sound a little cute, I hope you will agree that it greatly clarifies the material. The basic approach of this model is to introduce a standard cast of characters. And every time we consider a new surveillance practice, we'll tell a new story with that same cast of characters. Our lead character is named Alice. Throughout the remainder of the course, Alice is going to use a variety of communications and computing technologies. We'll work through how the law both enables and restricts surveillance against each of those technologies. Since much of government surveillance focuses on communications, we need to give Alice someone to talk to. In the standard security cast of characters, that's Bob. Upcoming lectures will feature Alice and Bob communicating initially by phone, and later using more modern information technology. Since the police will be seeking access to Alice's data and Alice and Bob's communications, we need a police character. Let's call him Peter. Depending on your political views, perhaps Peter should look more like this, uh, but let's stick with the friendly-looking police officer. Our final character is a judge, who we'll call Jane. I'd suggest Judy, but I don't want to get sued. Judge Jane is going to serve as an independent check on Peter. Before he can access Alice's or Bob's data, he sometimes needs to get Jane's permission. Okay, so there's our starting lineup. We're going to see these characters a lot in the coming lectures. This part of the course is going to use the cast of characters to work through the basics of phone surveillance.